After the dust settled from last week's jobs data and FOMC press conference, the market is ripping higher here. We're looking at the NASDAQ, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about whether or not I think that this rally is sustainable, and if this is just a pushback to the highs, or if there's some rocky roads ahead for indices, gold, the dollar index, we're gonna talk about it all, so let's jump in. Welcome back to the channel, guys. I wanted to talk a little bit first about catching us up to speed. What's the synopsis? What's the summary from last week's market data, which was so imperative to the market? Well, the first chart we need to discuss is the fact that NFP came out lighter than expected for the first time in five months. And I just added this new chart. If you're an Edge Finder user, head over to labor market data, then click NFP and scroll down. I added this new chart. It's the actual number of jobs that came in compared to the forecast or actual minus forecast in thousands. And you can see that we had a five month streak of hotter than expected jobs compared to forecasts. And we just got on Friday the first miss or lighter than expected print. So why on earth is the market excited about this? Why did gold jump? Why did the stock market jump on cooling labor data? Well, the short answer is all baked into the probabilities of a rate cut this year. What we can see is that now the market is estimating that by September's meeting, we will probably see our first rate cut from where we currently sit at 525 to 550 on the Fed funds rate. Now, remember, rate cuts are highly stimulating to the economy because companies can then, you know, borrow money a little bit more affordably. The consumer has a little bit extra money in their pocket and they can go spend money. These are great for businesses. Now, at the same time, however, not only did we see a rate cut for uh, September become now the kind of consensus, but also check this out. There's a possibility that in December, we get a second rate cut down to 475 to 500. So the market cheered this cooling data because perhaps a slowing labor market could help the inflation story. Remember, the Fed is holding off on cutting rates because inflation is sticky. And again, the market's reaction to this has been very positive. What we can see is that higher lows have been coming into this market. And as we speak today, the chart is looking really strong. We've even broken through this level of resistance at the 5120 level. And I can't lie, this looks bullish. But let me add one other kind of thought process for you here going forward. The Fed has a historical track record of not always being able to guide us to a perfect soft landing. That is where you don't get a crash in the employment world, uh, but you also see the inflation moderate. Unfortunately, in historical terms, it's rare that that is actually what ends up happening. Most of the time, uh, when the Fed raises rates a lot and then they have to start cutting them, usually the first rate cut, uh, it has some kind of differing views on what that means. Sometimes that means, oh, the economy is really slipping, we might enter a recession. Other times it's, hey, the economy is seeing, you know, still growth, but inflation is moderating. That's the question on everybody's mind. Which case are we going to see? going forward. Well, on Friday, I actually picked up a gold long position because cooling economic data in our scanner, uh, the edge finder, what we have on the top setups page is you can see that gold is getting a bullish reading here. And the reason for that is if we head over to the data scanners page, check this out, we'll pop open data scanners and we're going to go specifically to the gold scanner, which will give us an overall view. Why are we getting a plus six score, which is giving us that bullish rating on the edge finders fundamental score? Well, COT data still looks strong. We'll look at COT in just a moment. We have a mixed reading here. Seasonal uh, trends are up in the month of May, historically speaking. The trend is still kind of short term bearish, but we'll see if that starts to flip. But we get a lot of positive readings here from the economic data. GDP numbers came in light. Services PMI came in light. Manufacturing PMI came in light. Retail sales is still strong, but labor data starting to slide. All of these paint a picture, in which case I would like to be long gold because the fundamental story to me leans bullish. Now there are some bearish cases for gold. For example, any de-escalation in the Middle East is actually bearish for gold because again, that takes away from the fear factor story, which does tend to drive gold's prices higher. But again, like I mentioned, I am long gold. I'll show you my position here. GLD is an ETF that tracks the price of gold. And I went long on this one on Friday with a stop below the lows here. I actually plan on trimming my stop loss here for those of you who are inside of our Discord channel. And a quick shout out, if you're not already inside of our Discord channel, you can see all of the trades that I'm taking throughout the day, throughout the week uh, by joining our Discord channel. There's a free version 
version and a paid version. Both will be linked down below in the description of this video. Just open up the description, click that link, and you can join our Discord. So when we look at the daily chart price action for gold, the reason I went long is because we've seen this area be a pretty pivotal spot on the price action chart here recently. In fact, with this big sell-off candle, we did see buyers come in and buy that dip. And on Friday, we had a nice little wick rejection off the bottom. I went long and so far it's looking okay. Uh, but like I said, I'm gonna trim my risk on this trade just in case we do break through that support level. If the bearish story comes back in, uh, then I will just take a small controlled loss on this one for gold. But if we do start to see the rally continue and expand, then I'm going to look to manage this position and see if I can let a winner run. Another couple charts I wanted to look at were the pound yen, the dollar yen. You can see here some of the current top setups algorithm uh, or our algorithm generated uh, for today. These are you know things like euro, the gold market, and there are more charts than this on the edge finder, but right now I have it filtered just for the strong readings. You can see here's the neutral readings where we have lots of things that are just not getting a decisive enough reading one way or the other. But before we get into the yen crosses, let me just give you a little bit of an update on the COT report. What we can see is speaking of the yen, it still has a very heavy short bias by institutional money. Same thing with the Swiss franc, the Australian dollar, the Canadian dollar, and bonds. And then on the bullish side, you have gold, oil, the Nikkei, and silver. These are things that proportionally speaking, long contracts versus short contracts, institutional money is very long long or very short. On the weekly filing side, we can see what the latest institutional buys and sells were. We have NZD, CHF, CAD, Euro, uh, and Aussie, and then also some gold in there as well. And then if you flick it, flip it to the bearish side, check this out. You've got stocks. So US 30, silver, SPX, NAS, pound, the 10 year bonds and the Nikkei, lots of selling on the indices side. I thought that was very interesting and worth noting today. Also, by the way, if you want 30 days access to the tool that I'm using here to help guide my fundamental analysis, again, fundamentals are way too much data to try and do just by surfing the internet. If you're looking seriously to use fundamentals, I highly encourage you check out our software or another company software that allows you to source lots of data in one place and perhaps even more importantly, get an actual bias from that data. If you don't have access to the Edge Finder, you can get 30 days access by using the link that's posted down below in the description of this video. Just fill out that application form and someone from my team will get in contact with you about getting you a trial. All right, so as promised, let's take a look at some yen pairs. Really quick, we saw a huge slide here. Uh, around that 160 level, it seems like the Bank of Japan or the Ministry of Finance specifically is looking to support the yen. Now remember when you're looking at UJ, when I say support the yen, if they want to strengthen the yen, uh, they're of course selling dollars, selling pounds, selling euros, and uh, in, in essence, that's how they're strengthening the yen, right? They're selling the counters to the yen, buying the yen, buying their own bonds, whatever they're doing, etc., to essentially support the demand for their own currency. And this seems to be the first one where we've actually seen uh, those gains on the yen hold. Uh, so again, we've seen several instances recently where you've had these intraday drops that get supported by buyers, but this is the first one where we've seen actual follow through. And we've come down to this 152 level, which was historically speaking, a level of resistance that took many, many months to break out. So I think that this is probably, for the bulls at least, a very strong level of support. If you're watching the USDJPY or if you're looking at several other currencies against the yen, for example, here is Euro Yen. You can see that we've tagged this level here, a key level of resistance. And uh, arguably one of the more interesting ones right now is things like Australian dollar against the Japanese yen, which has reacted violently here to some of the risk on sentiment that's come into the market here recently with the stock market popping, what you'll generally see is that AJ or NJ, these uh, Australian dollar, the Kiwi, these commodity-based currencies or agricultural-based currencies, they typically see more gains during risk-on environments when you know growth is more favoring to them um, relative to you know the Japanese yen typically is in more demand when the markets are fearful as it is more of a safe haven currency. Um, so it does seem like Aussie yen has some upside from here. That being said though, I'm a little cautious because what we're getting from the edge finders readings is not so accommodating here. GJ and UJ and CJ are getting some bearish readings on the edge finder. So if you're looking at that and saying, well, where's the bearish setup on those charts? Well, when I look at USDJPY, for me, the only bearish setup that really makes sense on this chart would be if you come down to this level again 
and break it decisively. So no setups outside of this one. The only setup I see on the USD JPY currency pair is a breakout through this key level and then on the retest looking for sells. If we don't get that set up, there's nothing else for me on the uh, on the dollar yen. The Euro dollar is also getting a bullish reading. So very interesting here in terms of the setup, we're getting a plus eight. That's a pretty strong reading. And most figures here on our scanner are actually favoring dollar bearishness against the euro. So in terms of a setup here, uh, what I'd be looking for is you've already kind of had this break of structure here, this break of this downward trend, uh, right? You have what was resistance. I mean, this is a pretty strong reversal. I would say if you're really bullish on the euro, euro dollar, look for a retest like this. This might actually be an interesting setup going forward. And I'll be watching it myself to see if that does end up playing out. Let me now show you some of my current positions. So here's a current list of all of my active positions in the market. What we can see here is TLT is my kind of worst performing position. This is the bond market. And with yields dropping off of a cliff on Friday, that was actually really good for my bond uh, positions. Now remember TLT, this represents the bond market. And before you click off and move on, if you're a currency trader or you're watching gold, this part really pertains to you. TLT is are bonds and they trade a lot of times in some correlation to gold not always but a lot of times what i mean by this is that when yields are rising right when inflation expectations are high the fed's not going to cut rates and all that stuff TLT typically performs very poorly. It has an inverse relationship to yields. When yields are falling, or also, by the way, a weaker dollar is happening, typically, but not always, TLT rises in value. Now, TLT is a proxy in some cases for like an inverse to the dollar. Not always, again, it's a specific portion of the market. You're looking more at yields than you are against the dollar. But oftentimes, if I'm bearish on the dollar, I'll be trading TLT. And if I'm bullish on the dollar, perhaps I'll be shorting TLT. Right now, again, uh, TLT is a position that I've been working with, but um, that's currently one trade. Now, I also, so I sold puts on this one. I got filled. Now I've got a covered call uh, position that's in some profit, but the overall position is still red. Uh, TAN, this is another position that I have on, which is going well. This is a solar panel ETF. SMH, these are the semiconductors, your NVIDIAs and your AMDs, et cetera, Qualcomm's. Um, open PL, a PL there is pretty good. Uh, I've sold that put and it's looking really promising there. There's my GLD position. Um, XLK is a tech ETF similar to the NASDAQ, but again, technology centric. Uh, up very nicely on that one. I, I sold puts, got filled. Now I'm selling covered calls on this one. I sold calls on Friday, by the way. Uh, and then finally, we have V. EOO. This is my S&P 500 position looking really good. We went long on this one um, by selling a put, got got assigned. And now again, I am selling covered calls on that position as well. So overall positions are looking pretty good. Um, some winners, some losers, but uh, such is the way the markets go. Also, if you're not already using Weeble and you'd like to, there's a link down below in the description, but outside of just Weeble, wherever you are in the world, I just wanna encourage you, check out the description of this video down below. There's a ton of free stuff. And if you're looking or considering switching brokers, the brokers listed down below in the description have some free sign up perks available to my subscribers. Now, you'll also be supporting my channel as these are referral links, but I've worked out deals with each one of these brokers to give you special sign up perks. You can get free shares. You can get a welcome bonus. Just depends on which one applies to you. Again, there's brokers down there for FX traders, people inside of the US, outside of the US. Just go shopping down below in the description. I'm telling you, it's free game. Why not take advantage? Thanks guys for watching. If you're someone who watches my channel and you're from outside of the US, I want to tell you quickly about our top broker partner here on the channel, 8cap. 8cap is regulated by ASIC and SCB, and through TradingView, you can actually trade directly with your 8cap account. They also offer very competitive spreads and commissions. They have a wonderful support system and team, and you can trade anything from Forex pairs, commodities, indices, and even some select stocks. Check out 8cap using the link down below in the description, and there are some special signup perks if you use that link down below again in the description. Thanks for watching.